Welcome to this session on placing spaces. So in this session, we're going to take our office floor one plan and we're going to lay out a Z corridor and then four different office spaces. So first we'll place some walls to get that laid out and then we'll create the spaces. So you'll find this layout in the workbook. It's all dimensioned, but we'll go ahead and, and just place it here in the video. So I'm going to start by placing some walls. So open the wall tool and I'm going to use that same partition example partition one hour. So we don't no need to modify the width, but we do want to make sure we have the right height where again, we're going to go up to the bottom of the slab. So on this floor, that will be 13 feet, eight inches or 4,100 millimeters. We're going to place by line. We'll do a left justify, no need for side offsets. And of course, this won't be a closed wall. And I've also toggled off auto connect. I'm just going to snap to the end of my wall. So no need to auto connect and it'll avoid us doing, having any cleanup problems with our exterior wall. So I'm going to start here at the edge of the stair. And then we know this is a five foot corridor. So I'm just going to use my AccuDraw again. So I'm going to lock my axis with the enter key and then type in five or 1500 for millimeters. And then again, lock my axis. And in this case, I just need to snap to the edge of the lift lobby and then the final point and right click to reset. Then I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. And that encloses that Z corridor between our stairs. And now I will just add some partitions to designate four office spaces. So I'm going to change my justification there to center. I'm just going to trace these center lines here. Now I do want to let me zoom in here and get to the edge of my interior finish. We'll do another one here. And then actually this last one, we're going to line up here with, with the edge of our entry there. So again, I'm going to change my justification, lock my axis and just snap to my corridor wall. So now I've got the walls placed. And of course we could come back again later and add some doors as well. But what we're going to do now is go ahead and start placing some spaces. So spaces are placed in the model as a 2D shape, but they'll have a ceiling height, which actually gives them their volume. So we'll see that as we place these. So I'm going to come up to the ribbon and select the space tool. Now we can select a space catalog item here. And I've set up a couple different ones for this particular project. And so we're gonna use both this common area and the office area. So the common area would be all the spaces that are in the core here, the lift lobby, the corridor, the toilet rooms, and the, the mechanical and electrical rooms. And then I want to give this a, a label that would be the room name. And so this first one we're gonna place is the lift lobby. We're gonna give it a space number. I'm gonna start here with 100. Again, we want to make sure we give it a ceiling height, so 10 feet or 3,000 millimeters. And then we can also put in a programmed area, so perhaps the, the target area of this space, but it's also going to calculate the actual area. But that way we'll be able to compare the two. In addition, of course, there's a lot of other data that we go on these spaces. For instance, we could put finishes on all, all of the, the walls and that we could then be data that we pull into a finished schedule. So let's just add something here. We'll, we'll put in a ceiling finish and I'm just going to select paint one. Then I'm gonna go up to my placement ribbon 
and we have to select a placement method. And I'm just going to, for this one, use the draw rectangle method. And then we're just going to come over and draw on our plan here by snapping to the corners of the lift lobby. If I change my display style to wireframe, let's go ahead and do that. We can actually see that tag. So this is a tag that goes on the space that shows up in the model. So we'll see the, the label here, the lift lobby, the, the number, room number, and then our, our actual area, and then that programmed area just happens to match in this case. Now, when we create our drawing, that tag will get replaced with an annotation in the drawing with some of the same information. All right, so let's select the space tool again. And this time we're going to switch our type here and we're going to do the offices. So we'll switch our type to the example office. It already put in the label. And notice it's sequentially numbering the, the numbers. So we started at 100, so now we're at 101. I'm going to leave the ceiling height at 10. I'm going to change the programmed area. This time I'm going to use 2,500 square feet or 250 meters. And let's just scroll down where we put in that ceiling finish. And this time let's use ACT1, acoustical tile. And then again, up to my placement ribbon, and for these, I'm going to select the option of flood area. This allows me to just select a point within the space and it will flood to the boundaries of the space. And there's an option to make that associative, which means that if we were then to move a wall, the space would update accordingly. It would essentially reflood its boundary. So I'm going to start down here and I'm just going to do a left click, a data point within that space boundary. Now I need to be able to see the entire space in the view in order for it to flood. It's going to give me that green hatch to indicate the area to be flooded. And as long as, as that looks good, we're going to left click again to accept. It's placed that tag there. And then I can come over and do the next space. And notice, let me scroll back up here, it's, it's going to start sequentially numbering those. So this will be space 102. So again, left click, left click again to accept. And then I move to the next space. And I can left click, left click again to accept, and move to the last one. Left click, left click, and then a right click reset will take me out of the command. Now you can see over in our ISO view that those colored spaces have gone in. So the office spaces are colored blue, and the these common areas are, are gray. And we'll zoom in here and see those tags. So we've got the Office 102. We can see the actual area here is at only 2100, even though the programmed area was 2500, whereas this one is 3000 versus 2500. Now we might decide then we want to move our demising wall there. And so I could just take this wall and move it maybe over to this column line. And we'll see now that our actual area has adjusted and it's become much closer to that programmed area of 2,500. And so you can go ahead and finish placing the rest of the, the spaces in the core. Those would be common area spaces, but we have a mechanical room, an electrical room, a service area, two toilet rooms, and the corridors. Now in the next session we'll place ceiling grids in each of these office spaces. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.